Welcome back to The Painting Coach and today we're painting the Satan Shard of the Void Dragon. If this is your first time on the channel or you've not done so already, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified of all my latest videos. Okay, here we go. So it's Void Dragon time. Now, as you can see from this, I've primed the model black and then I've used lead belcher spray to get the, the silver bits base. Now, I've tried to avoid the other parts of the model, but obviously you can see in some parts I've oversprayed, but that's no major issue. So the first thing I want to do is lay down some uh, some colour that before we kind of get into shading everything. Now, hopefully this will be fairly straightforward, we'll see, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. So the first thing we want to do is is paint the, the shell on this uh, Conoptec control unit uh, and I'm using Rune Lord Brass. Now this is the base version of Rune Lord Brass um, and essentially what I'm doing is just painting the outside of the carapace for this little chap. Now when we get some shading on that it's, you know it'll kind of bring it down a bit so just get that over all the carapace nice and simple like that. Uh, in terms of my mix you can see on the palette there it's not overly thin it's uh, probably one brush of Rune Lord brass and uh, another brush of little dip into the water just to thin it a little. So get that finished and we'll do a little bit more basing on the metals next before we start to shade it. So next up on the uh, metallics we want to use some Canoptic alloy. Now in terms of how I've mixed this it's quite thin anyway so I've just put a little smidge of water on it just to help it flow a bit smoother and what we're looking to do here with a canoptic alloy is paint these uh, I'm going to call them wings uh, because that's kind of what they are um, and we just want to paint along leave the insert but we just want to we should be able to get a decent coverage on there as you can see there's not that much difference in color but when we shade it and when we highlight it it'll it'll start to show up and also obviously this will do this a little bit of a darky blue color if you followed any of my other Necron tutorials you'll know uh, you'll know how that works so just get both wings covered in the canoptic alloy and then we've got a little bit of gold to do around the front here then we'll uh, start shading the model down the next color is a bit of a bright uh, gold uh, which is going to be retributor armor and in terms of what we're going to paint with this, we're looking at kind of this, uh, we could call it a crown, I suppose. Uh, and in terms of how thin I've made the Retributor armor, it's just the uh, same kind of mix as what I've put uh, everywhere else. So it's just pop the Retributor down on the wet palette. Again, I'm using the Red Grass Games wet palette um, for, for this. Um, I do love the Red Grass Games palette. There's a link in the description if you want to get your own, but uh, I, th I think it's a great palette. So just work your way around this, uh, being careful not to, not to cover any of the silver that's going to become black stone later on. So just take your time, work it around with this Retribute Drama, and then we'll come back and we'll start to shade uh, the Void Dragon himself. Okay, so the first shade we're going to use is a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade. Now this is uh, straight out of the pot and this is to go over all the canoptic alloy areas and actually straight away it darkens it down quite nicely make sure you get into the recesses and paint it all over as well now we want this to settle more towards the bottom so that it's browner so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint to that end now don't worry if it kind of gathers a little bit like that that's fine uh, because obviously when we go in and highlight we'll take it out so we want to cover all the bits we painted canoptic alloy the other things we want to do as well is we want to catch these gold areas but we don't want to darken the gold too much so we don't want to shade it too much we want to be careful again when we come to the the bits that we're going to be painting the blackstone bits later on so i'm just putting this on it's and just a thin coat we just want to get it into some of those recesses and provide a little bit of shade towards the bottom so work all the way around those areas we'll come back and we'll put a darker shade over everything else once we're really happy that that uh, agrax earth shade is dry we're going to wash everything else with some null oil but we just want to kind of wash some of the more recessed areas and what i don't want to do is let this settle too much so i'm just kind of 
going into some of these joints and don't worry if it spills over if it's a little bit untidy because we're gonna we're gonna dry brush and then highlight the uh, the body of the void dragon so just work this around be careful uh, of getting it into anything you've already finished but we want to get this black stone done as well just just to get into some of those recesses so that it gives us uh, something to, to play off it's very windy here at the moment so apologies if you can hear that blowing in the background but uh, so just get that done work around all the silver like that um for the canoptic uh, that's controlling him we can paint the whole carapace there with that null oil and then for this spine coming down here with the tail again we can just work that null oil all the way into these gaps and recesses so get that done uh, and then we'll come back and we'll start to, we'll start to highlight up the rest of the metallics ready for uh, all this green lightning we're going to be doing so when that null oil is dry we want to bring some shine back so this is Necron compound, which is obviously a dry paint. And what I'm doing with this is I'm dry brushing, but I'm only brushing in a downward motion. So what this means is that it's only those kind of parts of the model that are pointing up that are getting any, any coverage to make it bright. And it just adds to the subtle tones that uh, you get through the model. So. I'm going to do this on the, the spear as well and the arms uh, and that's it really for this uh, kind of highlighting. I want to catch as much as I can but I want to leave that null oil in the recesses because it just gives just gives a really nice effect and a really nice shimmering shifting kind of silver which is the effect we're going for and what we'll get when we put the um when we put all the different colors on so get that done and we'll come back with chrome next to just do some sharp highlights so we want to highlight the rest of the metallics now so i'm going to use chrome uh, from Vallejo model air now i don't thin this down at all because it's from the model air age it's it's already thin enough uh, so in terms of what i want to do with this i want to highlight some of the edges along the black stone you can see there it gives you that nice bright shiny silver edge also some of the hard edges on the on the void dragon itself just because um it'll help us when we come to doing some of the the light effects and the glow effects later on so just work your way around doing that really i'm also going to use this to highlight up the um again we'll call them the wings and what i'm doing just catching those sharp edges, <clears throat> excuse me, to make it really easy to get a nice, uh, nice sharp highlight. So pretty straightforward. Just work your way around doing that with the chrome. Um, and with this stage, it's up to you. You can do as much or as little as you like. Um, I'm probably going to do a fair bit just to make certain parts of the model pop. But after all, this is going to be one of those uh, display models. And the other thing you can do as well with some of that black stone is where you've got these cracks. You can just use the tip of the brush just to score in and get a nice kind of highlight. Because when we put the glaze over this, it'll just give you a nice, uh, nice bit of differentiation. There. So work your way around getting that done. I will come back and highlight the gold next. For the gold highlight, I'm going to use Liberator Gold. Now you can see on the palette there that uh, I've not thinned that down. Um, because I don't want too much on the model and all we're going to do is we're just going to draw it along those edges there just highlighting over that retributive drama so just work your way around and get that done there's not much of this and then we'll come back and highlight the canoptic unit on, on his back uh, and that's all the metallics done and we'll get on to the fun parts next. The last metallic highlight we're going to do is Sycorax Bronze. Um, now you can see again on the palette I've not thinned this down because it's a very thin paint anyway. So all we're looking to do is just catch some of the edges here. Let's make sure you can see it on the camera. On the, uh, the Canoptec construct that uh, 
controls the void dragon where we can catch an edge we will so again it's very little to do here just highlight it up nicely let's get that line there so we can establish the shadow underneath and if you need to give that a little bit extra then just give it a coat when it's dry so that's the metallics done i uh, will come back and we'll base up all the kind of bright shiny bits next okay so this next bit is probably going to be one of the more time consuming parts of the model so just get yourself strapped in and ready that it's going to take you a little bit longer so we're going to use corax white and you can see i've got it here on the panel on the panel on the palette uh, quite heavily thinned down um, because it's quite a chunky paint now what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to paint all the flow of energy so you can see there it's covering okay but it's probably going to need uh, two coats and the other thing i'd say when you're doing this just take your time don't attack it with the brush because if you attack it with a brush you'll get um, splash marks and we don't want to splash anything over onto um, the metallics we've already finished so just take your time around the hand be careful um, and other things we're going to do so we've got this blade down here so we're going to do this uh, as well now i anticipate that this is going to take uh, two coats on all these bits so get everything done and base with the first coat and then once it's totally dry go back in for the second uh, other things you know if you're not sure check the box out but we've got this um, talisman here which uh, needs to be white and I'll paint this off cam because it's easier but you've got the orb in there for the uh, Canoptec controller just there so work your way around get all that white like I said it's going to take you a while it's going to take some time so just strap in for it but it's really important to do this because it gives us a great base and a great result after if you're not sure which bits to do just check the box art okay so looks pretty good there so a nice two coats of the of con of corax white so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to mix up um a glaze of a kelly and green contrast paint so what i'm doing is i'm just popping two portions of contrast medium to one portion of a Kelly and Green contrast paint on the palette. Pallon? Palette. I, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I just can't speak for some reason. Um, so we're going to do a couple of things with this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to base this uh, the, the black stone. So just be careful not to get it into any of the uh, over any of the bits we've already painted. And this is fairly thin, so it's just going to stain it. And what you'll find is that to get the a really good effect you can have to go in and put a second coat on so but i'm just going to show you the first coat here um, because i want to show you some of the other things we're going to do with this Achillean green contrast paint so you don't want too much on your brush for this and you might want to brush it off onto a, a paper towel but essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to use it to line in these joints around some of the muscles and the knees and things like that and what you'll see is that it's actually a really subtle effect, especially in those kind of darker areas where uh, perhaps we've got a little bit of null oil. So I'll just show you in some other areas. So around the face, for example, just in the deepest, deepest recesses, we're just going to work this Achillean green in. And it just gives us a kind of a little bit of life to what's otherwise just a plain silver model. So it's going to work that in there all the way round. So if you're not sure again of where uh, this is going to be, just check the box art because it's it's really clear on the box art uh, which areas have got this, and it's really straightforward. Um, and then if you want to add a little bit more definition to it, you can put a second coat in when it's dry, and I'll make it really dark. So I ended up just going with um, the one coat in there uh, on the black song because I think it actually looks really good. We've got some nice subtle tones on the, the metallics there. So what I want to do now is take some ink by darkness uh, and I want to paint this over all these uh, blocks here. So where it's black, it'll cover quite well. Uh, in terms of how much water I've added, it's just a little touch to help it flow off the brush a bit better. Now, you're going to come across bits that you've painted white. So just take your time and make sure you don't get any over the, the, the bits that you've already done white. If you leave some bits black, that's fine because it's going to be a dark colour anyway. Uh, just want to take your time around that white. If you do make a mistake, 
you can always go back in and fix it no, nothing's the end of the world but uh, obviously the less you have to go and fix the quicker you can get it done so just work your way around all these bits of chunks of rock don't forget these ones on the base as well and then we'll come back and uh, we'll highlight this next once that incubi darkness is uh, is dry we just want to give uh, these parts a, a dry brush with some uh, carbolite green just kind of on the edges again be careful not to hit any of the the white but if you do it's not the end of the world I do have to say at this point that the construction that's gone into this and the skill in designing it off uh, Darren Latham is absolutely fantastic how this all uh, fits together it really does look superb uh, so I'm going to go around and I keep dry brushing this uh, cabalite green all over um, I've noticed as well there's a lot of scarabs on on the rocks which I hadn't noticed before so once I've done this bit in the next stage I'm just going to dot that little eye with some white as well uh, so get this done and we'll come back with a final dry brush in the next stage uh, and then we're pretty set up to go and do all the glowing parts so next uh, bit of dry brush highlight we want to do is with um, cyberite green uh, which means I was was I calling the last one so it's cabalite green and this one's cyberite green so you've got the colors in the the top left anyway and this is just to catch those corner edges again just taking your time being careful making sure that there's enough support on the model and this is just brightening up these bits of rock um, if you want to go brighter then you can do a line highlight with some of these but I think what I'll do is just wait till we finish the model and then make a call then whether I want to be uh, make it brighter or not and I'll use something like ghost blaster green to to just add some line highlights on there so work your way around oops try not to drop the model and then we'll come back and next up we'll get the glowing bits done okay so for the glowing part the first color we're going to use is tesseract glow now we're going to paint this over all the white parts just take your time to do that now again really important that we run the brush over the model we don't splash at it because that will cause it to go where we don't want it so we're going to use tesseract glow twice we're going to use it for uh, on the metallic body as well but for now we just want to paint over all the bits that are white uh, apart from that because that's a phase blade that we'll we'll do later so get that done this is a nice easy straightforward part and then we'll come back um, and we'll do the, the bits on the on the body so everything's looking nice and glowing now so let's work on the body a little bit so we're still using tesseract glow and what we want to do is we want to find these areas where we've got these kind of uh, transforming cubes and we want to paint those uh, with the tesseract glow now notice from how i'm moving the brush i'm pulling the brush in towards these areas because what i don't want to do is i don't want to get too much paint settling but i also want more of it on the inside than i do the outside so that it looks like it's uh, just that one part of the model that's transforming and you basically i'm just going to work all the way around these areas where um We've got these kind of squares and transforming parts now if you've seen the silent king tutorial i did this is it kind of exactly how we did his cloak so uh, there'll be a link to that video at the end of this one but just it's a nice really straightforward easy way of just getting some nice effect and where you run over that um a kelly and green shade that we put down earlier you also get some really nice effects so you can see there this is starting to transform quite nicely as it dries the uh, brightness of the color will die down with it a little bit as well so it'll blend more into the model so just work your way around these bits where you've got all the squares and all the kind of transforming areas uh, and then we'll come back and we'll make a start on this phase blade here just while we're waiting for everything to dry it's going to take some magos purple again straight up the pot and we're just going to paint this tube that uh, is coming down here and uh, we're just doing this to just give it a shade really and just add a bit of interest based on the box art so nice and simple one just get this done and then we'll come back for the phase blade 
first thing we want to do is base the phase blade. I'm going to use uh, moot green for this. So you may need uh, two coats. Uh, see how it goes on. So this is moot green just with a splash of water in it. You can see on the palette there it's not running away. And it's covering okay. I'll probably give it two coats just to, just to make sure. And then we'll come back and we'll start to, to blend that blade on next. Okay, let's make a start on this phase blade. So that's that's the effect we're going for. I've done that half there just off cam. So I've got the palette in shot here as well because I think it's really important that you see um, how much paint I'm using here. So we're using warp lightning contrast paint. So you can see I'm wiping as much off the brush as I possibly can. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start about halfway and I'm going to move back to the end. So you can see there's hardly anything coming off the brush there. So I'm going to let that dry. Hopefully it'll dry nicely now while I'm, uh, while I'm doing that. And again, I've wiped the brush and I'm just painting towards the back. You can see I'm starting to really build up that kind of darker colour there. So I'm just going to keep going, keep working my way towards the back of this section. And you can see it's building up and blending quite nicely. So let that dry completely and then we'll come back and we'll just do the darker colour next. While we've got that warp lightning on the palette thinking about it, we can actually go and add a little bit um, around here. So where we've got these squares, where they kind of drop into the model, we want to add some of that warp lightning in there. And it just gives us a different hint of colour green, which just helps... Uh, offset the whole thing and make the whole thing pop a bit more. So work your way around anywhere you've got that little indent. If if the square is 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 raised, leave it. But if it's indented back into the model, just fill the kind of gap with a little bit of warp lightning. Really easy technique. So to get the uh, just darker colour in the corner, I'm using some dark angels green contrast paint. And again, you can see how much little I've got on the brush. And all I'm doing with this, I'm just painting this right up towards the back, just there like that. And that gives that nice dark green transition. Now, whilst we've got the dark angels green out as well, there is just another small part to do with it. So just put a little bit more on the palette so you can pull your brush through it and get a really nice point. And what you want to do is where you've got this circle here, you just want to fill that line goes around it with the dark angels green just like that so let that dry we'll come back and highlight it all next okay so the last bit of color we need to put on this is some ghost blaster green so in terms of how i've thinned it down i've thinned it down a little so you can just see there on the palette that it flows quite nicely and essentially what we're looking to do is catch the edge of the piece like that which is you know that's the, the nice easy bit just catch it around there and on the inside when you're doing anything like this it's best to try and use the tip of your brush because when you use the tip of your brush there's less in contact with the with the model and, and here then you just want to make sure that we're in shot first uh, and then we just want to you know a bit of brush control but we just want to work our way down the shape of the model just like that and there we are we just want to paint around those lines and that's the phase blade done now I did say earlier on that I think I might experiment a little bit with some ghost blaster just on some of these parts here and to be honest I think that's what I'm going to do and I'm just going to work around and just put some little highlights in because I think it does kind of add uh, to the effect particularly in here on the the back part of the base so I'm going to work more into that uh, quite selectively then we've got one more highlight to do uh, and after that highlight uh, the void dragon's done apart from the basing okay so we're getting close to the end now and the last color we're going to use is white scar use any white you want just make sure you've got a good point on your brush and what we're looking to do with this is we're just looking to pick off 
some of those higher lines just to give us a bit of a brighter glow uh, like that and I think that really does help set things off a little so you know in terms of dragging it along the top of some of these energy balls when it comes to the energy balls energy streams same on the uh, on the wings just picking out bits to just give that optical illusion that it's a lot brighter uh, than it is so nice and easy work your way around you can use as little or as much as this as you want it's entirely up to you but i think it does uh, really help some parts of the model stand out so work your way around and that's pretty much it base it and we'll have a look at it on the table next so there we have it the satan shard of the void dragon is done and ready for the tabletop i really really enjoyed making this video i really really enjoyed painting the kit it's absolutely fantastic and so well made so well put together I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the content for you guys. If you'd like to support the channel, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link to my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me, a monthly frequently asked questions thread, as well as exclusive content. You also get Goblin Gaming with up to 20% off using the link in the description. And you can see the links for Amazon for all my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.